Hello and welcome to the Clinical Liver Disease video series. DLD is an official digital learning publication of ASLD. I'm Victoria Chernak. Uh, I'm professor of radiology at Montefiore Medical Center, and I am a co-author of the article titled LIRADS, Future Directions, which will be published uh, in the upcoming uh, issue of CLD. I'm here with my uh, friend and co-author, Dr. Claude Sermon, uh, who is a professor of radiology at UCSD. Welcome, Claude. Thank you, welcome. Okay, so why don't we start uh, and uh, what are your thoughts about why should a hepatologist encourage uh, their radiologist to use LIRADS? Well, Victoria, you know, that's an interesting question. And so I think to answer that question, I'd like to start by telling a little bit of a story. I know you've heard this story before, but maybe the audience hasn't. So LIRADS was created, at least at UCSD, in 2006 because it was the hepatologists and the surgeons who came up to me and my colleague Cynthia Santiana, and they were complaining about our reports. They were saying that our reports were ambiguous, we were using different words to mean the same thing, the same word to use different things, and they said to us, we don't actually care if you're right or wrong, we just want to be able to understand what you think is going on. So if you go to figure three, uh, you'll see that the origin of LIRADS was in 2006, at least in an embryonic form uh, at UCSD. And then over the years, it's been expanded and, uh, and refined in various ways. And you can see here, there's multiple different steps. So I think what I'd like to emphasize is two different things. One, LIRADS was initially created in response to the needs of hepatologists for radiologists to be very clear in the radiology report. So hepatologists and surgeons and other clinicians would understand exactly what the radiologist thought was going on. And also, as you can see from this figure, LIRADS has continued to evolve uh, over time. Which then brings me to a question I'd like to ask you. So LIRADS started out as a very simple system just for CT and MRI, but it's sort of expanded over time. And so tell us a little bit about where LIRADS is now. Okay, so if we look at figure two, this is a uh, summary of LIRADS algorithm uh, that are available in uh, 2020 currently. And you can see that we cover all kinds of clinical scenarios, including uh, screening and surveillance with ultrasound, diagnosis with CUS and CT MRI, as well as treatment response assessment with CT and MRI. And uh, all of these um, algorithms are refined and developed and assessed and continuously updated by a group of uh, national and international uh, experts in liver imaging, uh, not only radiologists, but also interventional radiologists, hepatologists, uh, and surgeons. Uh, so we have all the stakeholders uh, uh, who are interested in improving uh, imaging of the patients with a chronic liver disease. This entire ecosystem uh, and structure created um, uh, many things in addition to the um, to the four algorithms I showed you, including uh, standardized lexicon, which we encourage uh, everybody to use, including uh, people who don't want to use LIRADS, but at least use the same lexicon so we all speak the same language. We have uh, training modules, we have educational materials, we have core documents, which expand on all these algorithms. We have a manual, which is a comprehensive document uh, expanding on, along um, many, many facets of liver imaging. Uh, that go beyond just the core documents. So we have a, co a compilation of frequently asked questions, which we continue to refine and update. So that's kind of a little bit of the uh, uh, you know, past of liars. But Claude, I want to ask you a question. Um, if you had to identify the most important kind of overarching goal for liars uh, for the next um, 10 years or so, where and how do you see it evolving? Um, can you share that with our audience? Well, Victoria, if you could, uh, if you could turn to the last figure uh, in, the, uh, in our manuscript, I think this sort of lays out, you know, sort of our, our broad long-term vision over the next 10 or 20 years. Um, LIRADS currently assigns categories of probability, you know, definitely HCC, probably HCC, et cetera, to observations in order for radiologists to communicate to the hepatologist or the clinician what they think is going on. But based on current knowledge, we can only provide this information sort of at a categorical level. But what we envision is that over time, especially with the lexicon that you have talked about and with some of the things that are happening in the, in the world of reporting of HCC, 
we think it will be possible over time to develop international registries that literally have hundreds of thousands of patients that we can track over time and that will eventually have enough patient characteristics as shown in this figure, as well as enough imaging characteristics so that for every observation, we can actually provide an integrated diagnosis that doesn't just provide a broad categorical probability of cancer, but can actually provide a continuous probability of cancer to maximize individualized patient care. And this figure that we see before us is sort of what we envision is the future of diagnostic imaging. And we foresee this as being something that will be real in about 10 or 20 years. Well, Victoria, I've enjoyed having this uh, short little conversation with you. And so on behalf of us and the CLD team, I hope that you, the audience, have found this short videotape conversation useful. For more information about the topic of LIRADS and future directions, please visit us at www.cldllearning.com. And thank you for watching. Thank you.